Welcome to today's Acuity update. It is 29th of January, 2021. I am Jonathan Brown, founder of Acuity, the fully decentralized social publishing platform. And if you don't know already, Acuity is going to be getting an atomic swap, fully decentralized exchange. And what I'm going to be doing today is to actually uh, go on a, a deep dive through the through the source code of the uh, of the smart contract that runs this atomic swap exchange. So first of all, uh, so what what is an atomic swap exchange? Well, it provides decentralized trade between different blockchains. So it has a, it has a few very interesting properties. So first of all, it has no operator. So it's fully based on smart contracts. There is no one actually running the exchange. So um, no one can interfere with the, the process. So you can have a lot more trust in uh, an atomic swap exchange than with uh, a traditional centralized exchange. Uh, also, an atomic swap exchange is non-custodial. So you are fully in control of your funds. So this is, uh, this is quite different to a centralized exchange where you have to deposit your cryptocurrency and wait for the, the confirmations and then you can, you can start trading. But of course, there's always the risk that you may not be able to withdraw your, your cryptocurrency because they're in control of the centralized exchange. And also the, the centralized exchange can also, they can do things like be uh, uh, fractional reserves. So they might, uh, they might sell some cryptocurrency that they don't actually own, or they can create cryptocurrency out of nothing and, and sell that. So there's actually, there's a lot of risks um, for centralized exchanges, both to uh, cryptocurrency holders and to projects that are having their cryptocurrency traded on these centralized exchanges. Another property of decentralized uh, atomic swap exchanges are that they are totally permissionless. So you can always trade. So there's, uh, there's no KYC process. Um, you can have confidence that you can use the platform at any time. It will never have any, any downtime because it's, uh, it's based on smart contracts. It will just keep running. And it's, it's permissionly, permissionlessly extensible. So unlike a centralized exchange where there may be an API, but then uh, they might control access to that API or limit its features with, uh, with an atomic swap exchange, then uh, every user has first class access to the, the API. Okay, so let's, uh, let's have a look through the source code of the smart contract. We're going to uh, run through the, the whole process of completing an atomic swap exchange. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start with a, a seller. So there's someone with Acuity that wants to sell Acuity. So they send in a transaction to the Acuity blockchain and call this function create order. So this creates the, the sell order and this is a, a payable uh, function that they're calling. So this means they can supply the the acuity in the transaction and they also specify the price that they want to sell their acuity. And the order ID for this sell order is actually automatically calculated from the address of the seller and the price that they want to sell for. So if they ever want to, uh, to sell the uh, to sell acuity at the same price in future, it will have the same order ID. So this uh, this acuity that arrives in the smart contract, this uh, this is just stored in the smart contract. But in in the contract state, we uh, we store uh, how much uh, acuity is associated with this order ID. So order ID amount is a mapping between. Uh, the order ID and the amount that is available for sale uh, for, uh, for that order ID. And you can see that we, we log the information from this transaction. So this means that an off-chain worker can then uh, aggregate this information and create uh, an order book. And they will know which, um, which order ID corresponds to 
uh, which seller at what price and how much uh, how much is available um, in each sell order so the uh, the potential buyer they can actually uh, through the the user interface they can uh, find a uh, a sell order that they want to to buy and it could be they want to buy it completely or partially and the first thing they have to do is off chain they create uh, a secret and this is just a random number that they want to keep private but they they hash this secret and this is what uh, is the first parameter to the uh, the lock by function then uh, they, uh, they specify the address um, of the seller who will ultimately receive the, the Ethereum. So this would match the, uh, um, the sender, the, and that's the, the seller on the Acuity blockchain. The buyer also specifies a timeout. So if, uh, if they lock up the Ethereum and uh, at the, the seller doesn't uh, satisfy their part of the bargain in, a, in enough time, then the buyer can actually retrieve their uh, their Ethereum. And then finally, the buyer supplies the, the order ID uh, that they are, are matching. <clears throat> so all of this information gets stored in blockchain state. So we have um, uh, a mapping between uh, the hashed secret and the buy lock. And buy lock contains the address of the seller. Um, the, uh, the amount of Ethereum that will be sent. And then we have a timeout for the, the buy lock. So the seller can then uh, observe what is happening. Of course, this information is emitted in a, a log, and this will also be aggregated by uh, an off-chain worker and presented in the user interface. So the, the seller can look at what's happening and determine that it's the, uh, the correct uh, seller address for that order ID and it's the, the correct value, the correct amount of Ethereum and so on. And then if that all checks out, then the seller will then send another, another transaction to the Acuity blockchain and uh, they will call lock sell. So they've already locked up their Acuity but uh, that's uh, for the, the sell order. So now they need to move some of that or all of that acuity uh, specifically to, uh, um, to have it locked up to match um, a, a buy order. So again, they, they send in the price that uh, they are locking up the, the cryptocurrency for and the, the order ID is automatically calculated again, just like in the original uh, creation of the sell order, they, they, set, they sent in the price. So they send in the price again, the order ID is automatically calculated from uh, their address and from the price. They, uh, they send in the hashed secret. So this is what was provided by the buyer on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, they also can specify a timeout and uh, they also specify the, the value. So that's uh, how much acuity um, uh, the, the buyer will receive. So that should uh, match uh, the expectation of the buyer in terms of how much Ethereum the buyer locked up uh, for, the, for the sell order. And then we, we do a basic check just to make sure that um, the sell order already has uh, that much acuity available. And if so, we just uh, perform this little uh, re reallocation. So we remove that, um, that locked acuity from, uh, the, uh, from the, the cell order, and we move it into this uh, uh, cell lock. So we, um, that's a, a simple uh, mapping between the order ID and the cell lock structure. So the cell lock contains the order ID uh, the value that the, the buyer will receive and, and a timeout. And again, this is all, uh, this is logged. So um, it can be aggregated by an off-chain worker and presented in the user interface. So at this point, the buyer, they will observe what's happening 
and if they are happening if they're happy with the actions of the seller then they will reveal the the secret so they will send in a, a transaction to the acuity blockchain and um, it will contain the the secret they call this function unlock sell and of course this can then be hashed in the smart contract to determine the hashed secret and then um, we know which uh, which uh, cell lock we're we're, we're we're dealing with so we do a check to make sure that cell lock hasn't timed out and then we uh, we delete the cell lock and we send the acuity to uh, to to the buyer so um, the, the buyer has already they've locked up their ethereum um, they've provided the uh, the secret to the acuity blockchain so now the buyer they receive their their acuity and then the the smart contract uh, then logs this information so again that gets uh, aggregated on on the back end and of course this has revealed the the secret so now it is possible for the seller to go to the ethereum blockchain and retrieve uh, their ethereum so um, actually well this this function is for the uh, timeout cell so if uh, um, if uh, if the buyer took too long then the uh, uh, the seller could call this function but uh, in the case where uh, the buyer has satisfied their their side of the bargain then the seller will call uh, unlock buy on the ethereum blockchain provide the secret and uh, then the hash secret will be determined by the smart contract we we check the buy lock hasn't expired and then we can we can delete the buy lock and send the ethereum to the uh, the seller and again log what's happening um, and of course if uh, if if that doesn't happen in a in a timely manner there is also uh, you can time out the the, the buy lock as well so this is how a fully uh, autonomous trustless um, atomic swap exchange can happen um, implemented in the uh, atomic swap uh, smart contract now of course at the moment this is still a work in progress so it's uh, it's uh, it's it's quite mature already but uh, it needs more work in teams in terms of optimizing the smart contract we need to write the uh, the unit tests and this uh, this contract is is not audited yet either um, but uh, this this has a lot of promise for actually making sure that the the value of acuity can be traded in a fully uh, autonomous manner and for the uh, the free market to determine the the true value of acuity so i, I hope you find that valuable i'll be uh, making some more videos in the near future so talk to you all again then thank you very much